Go ahead. Whenever you're ready. After the week of daily downpours, the trestles that support the throwing arm are ready to be raised. At the top of the trestle, the throwing arm rotates on an axle that has to be both strong and exact and the counterweight, so it has to be fairly precise. Marcus Brandt has taken on the job. Well, we've got to address the issues of, of axles. Um, we've got two sets of axles with this fixed arm, uh, fixed counterweight machine. We've got the axles down here to carry the wheels, and we've got this more precise axle up here, which carries this eight tons of, of weight and, and uh, arm, and it has to be fairly precise. We've set up a, a great wheel lathe, which is a precursor to modern lathes. It's just a great big flywheel that's powered by muscle, and it turns this uh, 10 by 10 down to an 8 by 8. How you doing, Phil? You don't have too much there? In order to position the heavy throwing arm, the timber framers place an A-frame above the trestles to support the pulley system, a standard medieval device. A block and tackle dramatically reduces the number of people required to pull on the ropes. Now, block and tackle is a fairly simple device. It magnifies your pull. If I were to lift my own body weight with a single rope, I would have to pull down 200 pounds to lift my 200 pounds of body weight up. With this, I'm hooked up to this double sheath pulley, and I've got four lines which share the load equally. So. 200 pounds here is only 50 pounds on each one of these ropes. So to lift my 200 pounds up, I only have to pull 50 pounds here. Now, mind you, I have to pull four times as much rope, but it really works. Yeah! Despite Hugh's predictions that a trebuchet on wheels would shake itself to pieces, the reverse is true. Wheels dampen the recoil. Everything appears to be working as Wayne predicted, except the range. The ball only traveled about 170 yards, falling short of the wall. What are we? 30 yards short and about five feet low. I thought it was flat, which means we got to think short in the sling so it releases sooner and goes higher, which should get us to the wall. Just like his medieval counterpart, Wayne uses a process of trial and error to alter the trebuchet's range by adjusting the length of the sling. With the first throw, a long sling resulted in a late release and a low trajectory. By shortening the sling, Wayne believes the ball will be released earlier, resulting in a higher path. Wayne's adjustments have the desired effect. The second throw has perfect range, just missing the target to the right by two feet. After last night's narrow miss, Wayne's trebuchet is repositioned to be more in line with the target. All we're doing is shifting it slightly to the left. We're throwing to the right a little far. So we've shifted about one inch, so that hopefully we'll be dead on center. With the same 250-pound ball as yesterday, and the sling at the same length, Wayne believes he is now dead on to hit the wall with his third attempt. The third shot is identical to the second in distance. At a range of 200 yards, adjusting the wheels one inch to the left, place the missile bang on top of the hoarding. 
Yeah. We've gotten wood. I don't know if we've contacted any stone yet, but we've knocked uh, the uh, hoarding pretty well. Uh, we've made it a little high. We've come down a little. Putting on their kilts for good luck, Wayne's team rushes to get in one final shot. over here it just pulverized the, the stone on the inside it confirms what we came here to prove didn't it that uh, we've, we've had a lovely hit smack in the middle and it smashed it and it's busted it right through to the bat so it's quite obvious that if you've got one of these trebuchets and you've got a castle like this and you've got plenty of time to shoot it you're going to knock it into a powder we can reduce this to rubble